All right, kids, buckle in. This is gonna be a wild ride between the medication and uh, lack of sleep and uh, discomfort. We might have a entertaining and amusingly abstract look at this game for the next few minutes. <laughs> so we're looking at, uh, welcome back to the big board, first of all. Uh, um, we're looking at the East Front series, which is, I guess, arguably called Barbarossa. And then you have modules, AGS, AGC, AGN, and a bunch of other bullshit. And so um, all these modules apparently play very differently as well, depending on the either the special rules or the way that the formations are aligned and set up and things like that, which I, I found interesting. Um, I have yet to have anyone describe to me how different they are or why or in what manner they're different. So <coughs> I think, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I think we're, we're in for an interesting experience with the system, regardless of any rules, quirks that might come about. So um, what I wanted to do was, uh, so we're at the, at the near the end point of turn two and the Soviets have moved and uh, we'll talk about mandated attacks maybe if I get to that we'll see I don't want to make this a, a, a enormously long video just a just a casual conversation about supply and uh, a little bit about a little bit about tactics and a little bit about um, <clears throat> a little bit about uh, just how the game play is kind of working out for me after an entire two turns so it's all new so we're all we're dealing with it and we're gr we're, we're grappling and wrestling this one to the ground uh this is a great uh for me it's a great exercise to experience a new large and somewhat complex system uh i enjoy wrestling these things to the ground and working them out so while it may be bitching and moaning as we go through the exercise we're, we're taking all of that into consideration and hoping we come out the other end going, oh yes, fantastic, or not, as the case may be. Now, the good news is with the EFS system is there's lots of cheat sheets and tools and bits and pieces and Vassal modules, and the Vassal modules have uh, some of the modified rules in them uh, already, so there's, your rules don't match to the actual rule book and stuff like that, which is kind of weird, but one thing I do have is this big honking, uh, very detailed uh, sequence of play. This is uh, page two of that sequence of play. Page three of the sequence of play. So as you can see, it's very detailed. So it, it, it's probably a little too detailed for my caring because let's face it, we're playing these games and we, we want to play the game. We don't want to... Uh, I don't want to experience every nuance of the 34th Brigade of the Russian militia. I don't give a shit. I, what I care about is give me a one, give me a, uh, give me a one, two, five unit, which you can't see because of my horrible handling there. One, two, five unit. And let me put that down on the board. I'm going to use that guy and, we, and I don't care that it's supposed to be somewhere else. So I, so when it came to setting up, I kept the armor and the artillery and the HQs all exactly where they should be for both sides. Oh, here we go. That storm came in. Okay. And um, with all the infantry and all this, you know, sort of ash and trash bullshit sort of units, we, we, we just put them down where they need. I just took a unit and put them where they needed to be. Because these guys, they're not going to be withdrawn and uh, and, you know, and reallocated somewhere else. I, I did some checking, and in in the main, it's major divisions or, or or motorized divisions or panzer divisions that are being pulled off the map or or back onto the map, as the case may be. So they're, they're the ones that matter. So knowing where they are is cool or important. Okay, so as usual with an East Front game, uh, well, let me say this at the outset: these maps are sublime. Uh, they're they're beautiful to look at. They are incredibly detailed. They're every little village and town, uh, pond, <laughs> uh, swampy thing is is here. The little dotted lines for roads they're a little hard to read through. They're minor roads. They're a little hard to read through the woods. You kind of go, oh hey look, there's a there's a wood there's a road through the woods there. Let me use that. 
Uh, that can often cause problems when you're planning your defense and you miss those little dotted lines, but that makes it fun, right? Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry guys. Uh, so, beautiful maps. The artwork on the counters is actually very functional. The, the font sizing and choice, you really don't have a lot of choices in terms of the, the scale of these fonts, but they're, they're really hard to read. And even if I put my reading glasses on, they're, they're difficult. So um, I, I don't know what they're going to do with the reboot of this game, but it'd be kind of nice that on the backs of like units like this, well, I guess there's no room there. So there you go. I don't know. I, I, I'd be inclined to... To, to a certain degree, there are units that matter where they are. So uh, this is the 25th motorized and the 14th panzer. We care where they are, right? Because they're major formations. But who really, I've got 100 of these 895 units, 100 of these 785 units. Do I really care exactly which unit goes where? Why don't we just take off those now I'm probably speaking. Now it's probably a blasphemy, isn't it? I've just I've just committed a, a, a massive grognard uh, blasphemy. Grand yard, grand yard blasphemy. Uh, we can't. Uh, we must know where the 297th infantry was. There it was, my friends, right there. It was not here in this stack with this guy. Oh, there's not even one there. Yeah. It's not this guy, it's this guy. They were here, that's where they were. You know, let's, let's make the game playable. So, okay, diversion, sorry about that. What I really want to talk about is supply because this is what drives the game, I think, and it's what drives the game play and it's what drives the way the Germans can uh, maneuver and do what they do. And it's not, it's not a, a logistical tale in the sense that the... OCS system has a logistical tail where you've got to get this sequencing of trucks and rail lines and all that sort of BS all sort of organized. What you have is a, a uh, number of hexes from a unit back to a uh, road, which then goes back to a railway, which then goes back to a supply source. And it can be e either and or of any of those things. And it's basically seven hexes. So when I look at the map, when we start looking at this map here and looking down here, which is, this is Lavov. Woo, hey now. Uh, just when you thought I was sick and not feeling good and slow, I've got reflexes of a cat. Lavov is here. That's a hub, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven roads coming out of this area. Uh, and, uh, one, two, three rail lines, four rail lines, five rail lines coming out of this area. So it's key for us. We've got, you've got to take Lvov early. And um, that will then gives you choices in terms of how you advance. And the goal is to advance that way to Kiev and make a major uh, headway that way and, and get lots of VPs and go south and get to Odessa all the way down there. I think it is. It's either Odessa or Rostov. I forget. It's one of the two. You can link it up to Rostov. I think it's Odessa. <clears throat> so to do that I've got to be anytime I want to attack I've got to be within seven hexes of one of these little uh, really seven hexes of a um, supply dump and those supply dumps where are they because I use them all uh, this turn pretty much actually here's one right here here we go so I've got to be seven hex within seven hexes of one of these guys for attack supply so that's going to drive how far I can push my advance because if I, if I don't have that attack supply, I suffer a plus two on my die roll, which trust me is kind of nasty uh, on the combat results table. So this leads us to following uh, supply dumps, by the way, can only move on railway. On railways, so I've got to, I've got to, you know, I've got to meander all the way along these little. Where's where are we over here? So over here, here's a railway. So we've got to meander along these railways, converting the rail line, having a supply dump uh, really put anywhere along there, and then um, place it. 
count seven hexes out, that's going to be the effective combat range that I can start, uh, uh, you know, messing with the Russian uh, forces. Now, by the same token, Soviets can go, okay, well, he can only be seven hexes. The furthest he can be, if he gets his supply dump to here, is seven hexes up this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He, he's not going to be attacking past here unless he wants to eat a plus two DRM. So I'm just going to put a couple of units in the way and slow down that advance and make you make you earn every step of the way. So the supply drives the cadence and it's, it drives the uh, focus of the attack. And so you may wonder then, why the hell did I choose to attack through here? Let me just try and, oh, sorry about the, uh, I've got this flexed leg tripod bullshit thing and it won't sit still, it keeps, okay. Uh, there's no railway through here, except for this guy that goes kind of north-south, but all the attacks that we made across the bug uh, out of Pol out of East uh, West Poland into East Poland, we did really well here. So we kind of doubled down on that and, and dug deep. And I was looking to kind of go deep and then come around and isolate all this stuff, uh, isolate all this stuff down here. Well, that's all well and good, but now I've kind of uh, run the extent of my supply lines because the nearest supply railhead is way back here, way more than seven hexes. So now I've got to take trucks. Okay, I take a truck. That means I forego one attack supply point that I could bring in by rail because I can bring two supply points in as a dump or one supply point as a truck. Let me see if I can focus in on that guy for you. So if I bring it in this way, I only I have a finite number of these. And if I flip it over, it's a two, right? So by choosing a one, I give up one supply point. So this turn, I gave up one supply point. I gave up two supply points actually, uh, and left them off board. Now, fortunately there is a rule that says I can actually bring them on, rail them on somewhere else. So I'm gonna, do, I did that, but at some point there'll be a su huge supply dump down in the South and we will have this situation where because of this this choice here, we didn't get to um, we, we we are not optimizing our supply network to facilitate the advance of the army. You can see after two turns, while this is nice, it's not helping unless we can cut through here, get to this rail line here, and forge some sort of communication link maybe through here. See, here's a here's a link here, right? Uh, uh, and see, even then, that's not going back. That's not going back. So it's not, this is, it's got to go through Lvov. So Lvov has to fall. So you have to focus your, your, your offense on achieving that goal. As the Soviet player, because of the way the game play works, the way that the play sequence works, and let me just summarize it out to you. We have this... Um, all this air ready in this bullshit, which we don't have to worry about right now. Axis play segment. <clears throat> so the Axis play gets to move everybody. They get to move their full movement points. Then the Axis uh, declare their attacks and they put a little declared attacks down. The Soviets get to uh, react. And in essence, it's motorized units get to move half. There's some other units that can move, but you've got to have HQs around to allow them to do that. Uh, then we do combat, then we do axis motorized movement, which is a half move. Then you flip over and you go to the Soviet turn. The Soviet turn starts out with Soviet motorized movement. So they move all their motorized units, full movement points, declare their attacks, axis get to react with their units, moving half. Then the Soviet combat phase, then the Soviet movement phase in which Soviet motorized units only move half. That cadence, that, that, dis, that asymmetrical or disjointed cadence there really means that as a defender, I, I, want to, I want to prevent this moving overrun. So move, overrun, kill that guy, then set up, attack that guy, 
get rid of him and then attack the next guy, then try and overrun the next guy. Uh, so if I can prevent, if I can put units sort of staggered back, it doesn't have to be this close, but if I can put units staggered back, I can really slow down the German offensive move forward to two or three hexes at a, a, a turn if I, if I had the units, if I wanted to just throw stuff into the meat grinder, assuming I get the replacements on the back end. So there's a, a really nice little system going on here. I haven't completely worked it out, but it seems to me that this kind of layered defense mode where if this guy wants to attack an, an overrun because he's a, a German division here, he gets all sorts of benefits for uh, attacking, but he'll also have a nice uh, a nice punch when he tries to overrun. He's not going to overrun a four defense unit, but he might try and overrun a two defense unit. So I can come up here and, and try and overrun here, but because there's interlocking zones of control there, that's going to cause a problem. So I probably can't do that this turn. I could do this guy, and let's say I did that and took that guy out and he retreated two hexes. Now, if I had the strength, well, that's a two there. So then maybe what I've done there is not right, but I could overrun again, knock that guy out. Then come the other units move up. We uh, rally around, attack this unit with a defense of five and destroy him. Then we've got to go and make the assessment. Does this division want to then try and in their motorized movement phase overrun a four strength unit which is a very difficult thing to do to try and clear that road here we've got a very different uh, situation because of the way the zones of control interact so lots of lots of nuance in here there's a lot of niggly exception based stuff that is kind of frustrating there's 36 pages of rules and uh, lots of stuff in here that make me feel like we're dealing with Wargamer 101 stuff and being explained to ad nauseum instead of, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I it, it's so, there's so much noise in the rules that when you start scratching, underlining what the actual specific circumstance and rule is for a given action, it's really not very complex. And I've I found that if I underline what, I'm allowed to do and ignore everything else and just focus on what I can do and not what I can't do. You know, don't give me a list of, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. Tell me what I can do. Uh, and then let's move forward. And then if there are exceptions to the can do, so for instance, with overruns, the, these, these mechanized and, and uh, panzer divisions, they can do overruns. Okay, well, that's all you need to say. You don't need to say artillery units and can't do overruns. <laughs> it's pretty freaking obvious, right? And if you're dealing with that sort of war gamer that, that has bought the game and it starts asking all those questions, if it was my, my game design, I'd tell them to go pound salt. Um, let's be practical. All right, uh, this turned into 18 minutes, but I tell you what, um, let me get through this turn and then we'll post up some more pictures and I'm gonna do, I've got, two or three other videos that hopefully you've already seen in terms of looking at the supply, uh, these uh, rail networks and supply lines, and we had the, all the victory points uh, allocated out on the map. You're probably wondering what these guys are. These are where the HQs are. They all have in interdict level two markers on them, which is uh, probably a game artifice to uh, try and uh, limit the HQ's capabilities to assist in the defense in the opening stages of the, of the war. So. We're four days into the war and the Germans really have not made a lot of it, uh, advance. There's the border, <laughs> all right? So uh, I forget the scale of the, of the game. Uh, I think it's three or four kilometers a hex or something like that. So, you know, it's, it has not been stunning uh, the Blitzkrieg movement, you know what I'm saying? It's been fairly, uh, fairly stoic uh, advance here. So let's, hopefully it'll uh, break open a little bit and we can get things going. But once again, it's all gonna rely on having access to a rail line and ideally a railroad line to allow us to uh, push the supply forward so that we can then leapfrog into the hinterland. All right, thought I'd share that with you a little bit. Talk to you soon.